Konnichiwa everyone. Today, got a pretty fun project in mind for you. Today we're going to make a Japanese planing board. Now, if you don't know what a Japanese planing board is, it is simply a semi-angled or flat board that you do planing on with Japanese planes. So this is going to be a pretty simple project, but I'm pretty excited because I've got some pretty cool wood we're going to use. First up is, we have some nice, big, thick, manly, heavy uh, red oak. And we also have some really awesome ash. Ash is a very heavy, very dense, very, very good wood for a lot of different purposes. And in this case, it's going to serve us really, really well. So before we can get any serious work started on this, I've got to address the crack in one of these main boards here. I think I'm just going to do a small little arricata or butterfly spline, whatever you want to call it. Shouldn't have to go too deep, but this is a pretty thick board, so I'm going to make it as strong as I possibly can. What I don't want to have happen in the future is for this thing to move and then slowly have that crack get bigger and bigger and bigger and ruin the whole planing board, so any precaution I can take needs to be taken in this case. Wendy. Now the cool thing about tight bond is you can dilute this stuff with water and it will still retain a lot of its strength. Oof, the wind is blowing today. Crazy. If I recall correctly, you can dilute this down to about 50% or so and not lose any strength or rigidity. Don't quote me on that, I'm no expert. Let's see if this works. All right, that is nice and tight. And a little bit there that kind of blew out with the saw. I'm not quite sure how that happened, but I'm happy with that. Whew, the wind is as biting today as a snake. Uh, yeah, not bad, getting there. Pretty happy with how that turned out. About to glue up very nicely. And so one quick tip that you can do, just so you don't forget which side you've joined, take your pencil, put a couple of lines that will have to line up, just so you can remember where you're at. All right, so one thing that's important to note about these types of things is that each one of these is gonna be for a specific purpose. A lot of Japanese carpenters have multiples of these, so they'll have different sizes for different jobs. My particular predicament is that I needed something that was wider than my planing beam. This is roughly 11, almost 12 inches wide. That's almost double what my planing beam is. Having this be a little bit wider like this is going to be great, especially for the small space that I've got because I can work with a lot of different panels, different woods, different types. And the weight also makes it a little bit better too for working with chisels and such and makes life a little bit more fun. So to make my life kind of interesting and because I'm my glutton for making things very, very fun, what I'm gonna do to make these two boards go together is a little bit different. I'm not just gonna glue it up on the face glue here and hope for the best. And so what I'm gonna do, we're gonna take one of our uh, plow planes. This actually is kind of a incorrect way to use this, but I've attached a little bit of scrap to the inside there and butted it up against the blade. And I'm actually gonna try to do kind of a lap joint sort of thing. So we'll cut a bit of a section off of this one, cut a corresponding section, kind of sandwich them together. Done deal. Shouldn't take very long, but uh, you know how these things can happen. Oop, that's the wrong way. <laughs> so make sure I do it on the right side. But as always, there is always the possibility for a problem, but uh, here's the hoping. Let's give it a shot. All right, just gotta get this set to where we want it. There we go. Perfect. Let's see, Let's see if this works. Now, a wise man once told me, if you don't have the tool for the job, find a way to make one. Uh, 
That's some epic shavings right there. All right, not bad. That's uh, that's pretty even, pretty flat. I might have one or two spots I'll need to take out, but I do I have the tool to do the job. Let's get the other one done. We got the slots cut. Let's see how these fit together, if they even fit at all. Ah, not bad at all. I'm pretty happy about that. There we go. Not too bad. There we are. All right, let's get some clamps on it. All right, that's pretty successful, I'd say. I'm gonna get a clamp on the other side. Just try to get this as straight as possible. This stuff's gonna make me This thing is heavy. Okay. Whew. Yeah, that is a brick. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. There's a couple of little spots where I didn't get as much squeeze out. I mean, you can kind of see it in the gap there, but just down here at the edge, I'm not quite sure how well that's going to hold. But I'm going to shove a little bit of extra glue in there just to have a little bit of precaution. But we're going to let this sit for a good long while. Check back in a bit. This is my least favorite part of woodworking, letting glue dry. All right, next day, next set of problems. The glue set pretty well. Got one gap down here I'm not too happy about, but that's probably my fault. But, eh, you know, what can you do? All right, so number next on the agenda is we are going to attach these legs to our board here. The method we're going to use, or at least I'm going to try to use to get these attached, is we're going to cut a sliding dovetail. Now if you don't know what that is, you're basically going to do a dovetail on one that goes the entire length of the board on both sides. So I'm going to cut this the entire length of this board, entire length on that side, pair it down with a chisel. I've never tried one of these before so I'm really hoping that this works, but yeah, you know, let's give it a shot. I mean, the worst that could happen is we have to do something else. So, here's to hoping. One tiny chip at a time. After a good bit of work, we have ourselves a semi, now I hesitate to even say semi, a decent attempt at a dovetail. It's just kind of pared down a bit. I'm going to try to cut the recess next. Ideally, it'd be great to have a guide for this kind of thing, but I don't have a guide for the saw. So we're going to freehand this. Not quite sure how this is going to go, but uh, here's to adventure. Well, it ain't the prettiest and cleanest joint here in the world, but we're gonna do a little test fit just to kind of see. Eh, yeah, it's getting in there. It's pretty tight. Might be a little too tight, but uh, just gotta keep doing a little fitting. A little fitting, a little checking, and just uh, work your way down.
All right, so that was a moderate success, except for that. Yep, I did not see that, and apparently I cut it a little too deep on this side. Uh, I mean, gotta make the most of it, because I really don't feel like redoing this whole thing. Now, a wise man once told me that if you're not making mistakes, then you're not working. Now, I'm a big proponent of the idea that it doesn't have to look pretty, but it does need to be practical, but we're gonna add a little touch of beauty to this. Now, this is cracked through here, but I've tried Hit, I've tried hitting this back out, but it's not moving. So rather than try to redo my mistake, I am simply going to make the best of it. Got a little spline here that I've cut, and we're gonna just kind of chop out a little bit through this crack here. Might look cool, might look crappy, but uh, gotta try it anyway, and we'll, we'll see what happens. And a wise man once told me, when you make mistakes, at least try to make them look intentional. Yeah, not bad. All right, pretty happy with that. So we have made some fantastic progress with this. I only have one more thing left to do, and that is to get the stop installed. For this one, we're just gonna repeat what we've been doing with the sliding dovetail sort of theme. This is a nice little piece of Osage Orange, which is a, oh, ah, which is a fantastic wood. If you have never used it before, I highly encourage you to give it a shot. Very, very tough, very, very durable, and the best part is it's bright yellow, so you're not gonna misplace it anytime soon. But we're just going to cut another sliding dovetail kind of roughly in this area here. Once the stop is installed, that will pretty much be our board. And then we're going to do a little bit of finish work on it, but it won't be too complicated. All right, as with all things, a little bit of practice and you tend to get better. Now we just gotta cut the stop and this is gonna be a done deal. All right, so flash forward a bit and we have our stop cut. Right now it's just a matter of getting it sized up to go into our little dovetail here. It's just a matter of fitting it one piece at a time. It's almost a little too tight, so I'm gonna take a little bit of time and Come on. There we go. 
It's going to take a little bit of time and get all the little bits lined up just right. I don't want this to be so tight that it cracks like our previous one did, but I also don't want it to be so loose that it just comes apart, but I don't think that's going to happen just given the nature of sliding dovetails, but one small step at a time. wind. Oh man. All right. A little work from a local encouragement device here and we are almost there. All right. Not bad at all. Nice tight fit and no exploded end bits and turned out pretty nice. It's going to be a nice little contrast on there. Now we just got to get this thing cut to height. Shouldn't take too long, I'm thinking it's just going to be about a half inch, maybe a little bit shorter, but uh, yeah, you know, you can always adjust it later. consistent height all the way down if I need to make adjustments in the future totally doable this stuff is really really tough but surprisingly it doesn't wear your tools out too fast so keep that in mind if you're gonna work with this I typically don't add finish to projects like these just because they're going to get torn up and everything, but in this case I think I'm going to do a little bit just for the heck of it. Just a little bit of butcher block conditioner. All this is going to do is just help condition the wood really well, keep it in good shape because this is going to get a lot of use out of it. Plus it's going to bring out this nice color that this red oak has. And I think that that is going to be a nice little addition to this. Tearing up a paper towel. All right, one more coat ought to do it. Just gonna let this sink into that wood, saturate it nicely. I am pretty happy with the color of that. That little fill came out really nice too. bad. Well that was definitely a very fun project. I'm very happy with how this turned out. This thing is a beast. It weighs in at about 30-35 pounds. Probably a little bit more than that but who am I to judge? I'm very happy with how these sliding dovetails turned out as well. That was definitely something new that I tried. Very very useful type of joinery for that. I could definitely see that being utilized in a lot of different very creative and very fun ways. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this and you want to check out some other projects and you want some exclusive access to some different stuff, all the patrons get the videos one week early. And so that means that if you are a patron, you can get to see all the cool tomfoolery happening a full week before it is released to the public. So anyway, check it out in the link down below. I would appreciate any support you can give. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day. Arigato gozaimasu. Sayonara.